and a National Institutes of Health study on mixing and matching COVID-19 vaccines and boosters found the approach to be safe and effective. So for more on this, we're going to bring in our chief health editor, Dr. Partha Nandy, to start off the week. And Dr. Nandy, what can you tell us about the data? And was one particular vaccine booster shot a clear winner? Good afternoon, Glenda. You know, it's really important to know that the NIH study was not, I repeat, not designed to determine if a booster shot or a particular combination of COVID-19 vaccines was better or superior to the others. It was more about looking to see if combining them was, first of all, safe, right? And secondly, how effective was this approach? Now, you might be wondering, why is that? Well, it would be helpful for a variety of reasons, like if one company, for example, had a manufacturing problem, or one, sh one was short on a particular substance needed for the vaccine, or if someone found out that they were more at risk for the blood clotting syndrome, TTS, that is linked to the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, which I have to tell you, it's very rare. But then, then if that happens, then they could instead get Pfizer or Moderna as their second shot. But getting back to the NIH study, let me start with Johnson & Johnson, J&J &J first. The people who received the one-shot vaccine and then got a Moderna booster had antibody uh, levels rise 76-fold. If they got a Pfizer booster shot, that led to a 35-fold increase. And if they got a second shot of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, that led to a four-fold increase in antibody levels. Now, what about the mRNA shots, right? So volunteers who first got Pfizer and then Moderna second saw a 32-fold increase in antibodies, whereas Pfizer-Pfizer combination led to a 20-fold increase. And the volunteers who had Moderna first and Pfizer second ended up with antibody levels similar to what Moderna uh, followed by Moderna combo would give. Lastly, there is no antibody increase seen in the participants who had Pfizer, Moderna first, followed by Johnson & Johnson booster. So lots of information there. Yeah, a lot of information, uh, but one thing clear today, we saw the very recent passing of General Colin Powell. His family is saying that he was fully vaccinated yet passed away from COVID-related complications. He did have some other serious health challenges, Doc, but would those have played a role in his death? First of all, my condolences yeah. to, to General Colin Powell's family. I told my kids, my sons, that I had much respect for this distinguished man and former Secretary of State. Now the general was fully vaccinated, but I've said before, right, our vaccines are not 100%. That's what we have to know. And people who are immunocompromised are at greater risk. And research has shown that those with compromised immune systems can struggle, Glenda, to develop enough protection from vaccination. Why I say that is because General Colin Powell was uh, was also reported to have multiple myeloma. That's a type of incurable cancer that can form in white blood cells called plasma cells. And this type of cancer lowers somebody's immunity and can suppress the body's immune response. Also, General Powell had Parkinson's and people with Parkinson's have a harder time recovering from COVID. That could be because many who are diagnosed with Parkinson's tend to be older, above the age of 60. And we know that seniors are more vulnerable and more at risk of developing severe COVID-19 illness. And General Colin Powell was 84 when he passed. So my condolences, but it really brings to focus, right? That if you are older, if you are immunocompromised, that booster shot is really important. I'm getting my mom uh, in and, and getting her the booster shot. Um, as we speak, we're going to get that scheduled and get her going. So it's important to know in this tragedy that we have to pay attention to the seniors and the compromised. Yeah, very important and incredible history making figure in life and now in death. Uh, Dr. Nandy, we appreciate that bit of clarity. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Coming up at 530, we're going to have more on the passing of former Secretary of State Colin Powell and how he's being remembered across the country. And if you have a coronavirus concern or question for the good doctor, you can email him, Dr. Nandy at AskDrNandy.com, or send it to us on Facebook or Twitter, and we'll get it right to him.